Digital Foundry is proudly sponsored by the Logitech G935 headset. This year's E3 delivered some impressive new Switch software, but hopes that Nintendo would reveal its hotly rumored hardware revision or revisions proved fruitless. The eagerly anticipated new Switches failed to materialize, but I suspect they will be appearing in the not too distant future. And while we know nothing about physical form factors beyond the rumors, the silicon at the heart of the new hardware is starting to come into focus. The standard Tegra X1 found within Switch is evolving and the evidence exists to demonstrate that both the mooted Switch Mini and Switch Pro are possible targets, offering improved performance, better battery life, and perhaps even both. The Switch hardware upgrade story starts last year, specifically around uh, March 2018, when Nintendo released the 5.0 version of its system software, which is known internally as Horizon. Support for the standard T210 version of the Tegra X1, codenamed Logan, was joined by a new, hitherto unknown revision, T214, also referenced as Mariko. NVIDIA's Tegra codenames are based on the names of superheroes, Parker being Tegra X2, for example, but Mariko is something different. Back in the day, in the Marvel comics, she was a love interest for Logan, a Wolverine. So the obvious inference here is that this is a partnership, not a new product. Beyond that, little else was revealed, though Mariko seemed to be matched with 8 gigs of memory, a potential two times upgrade for a retail switch or an extra two gigabytes for dev kits. Yeah, we had a closer look at one of those during E3. It reported six gigabytes of RAM in developer mode, four in retail mode. But what T214 Mariko actually is and how it differs from the standard Tegra, not immediately obvious, but it seemed to go beyond patching the security links that have made the switch such fun for hackers to play around with in the last few years. In recent weeks, though, the story has moved on. The OG Switch debuted around the same time as a hardware revision for NVIDIA's Tegra X1, found within the 2017 revision of the Shield Android TV micro console, and featured nigh on identical silicon to the Switch. Evidence suggests that the same thing is happening again. The Google Play developer console device catalog is listing a new Shield based on a T210 B01 chip. So, what's the connection between that and the T214 Mariko? For answers, we looked to Reset Era's Thraktor, <laughs> whose recent short post managed to join the dots between the two chips, with the evidence suggesting that both processors are actually one and the same. The Era post is brief, but Thraktor himself gave us the references needed to piece more of the story together. And funnily enough, it's all out there in public for anyone to see, if they dig deep enough. Outside of Switch, Tegra hardware is more typically used in open source environments, such as Linux and Android, meaning that Nvidia needs to publish its code. And yes, we have taken a look at it. Certain GitHub commits show references to the T214 being replaced with references to the T210B01. And there's even a comment highlighting the correction. So what's happening here is that uh, the NVIDIA developer is telling the other developers that the processor has been renamed. There are other smoking guns linking the two processors where commit messages refer to T214 while the code or the file names reference T210B01 instead. Another piece of evidence is that Nvidia uses the exact same voltage regulator for the T210B01 and the same voltage regulator is mentioned for T214 within the switch firmware. At this point, it seems almost certain that whatever new processor is found within the upcoming Shield Android TV revision has been supported in Nintendo's firmware for around 15 months now. But what we don't know is what the chip actually is. We can rule out a component that would have been a great fit for a new Switch, Tegra X2. This has much faster clocks, doubles up on memory bandwidth and features a very similar GPU to the X1 while retaining the ARM A57 cores 
found in the original T210. Tegra X2 has found a home in uh, automotive systems and the Magic Leap augmented reality glasses, but it's T186 designation. This is all sounding kind of Terminator-like. Well, it rules it out of contention as a Mariko contender. Whatever powers the revised Nintendo console or consoles and the shield is obviously something different then. And it's at this point where firm knowledge starts to give way to what are perhaps outdated specifications for the new chip. And uh, well, beyond that, all that we have is a good amount of theory crafting. Producing another T210, albeit a B01 version, suggests a good old-fashioned hardware revision of the same tech. The chances are that switching away from Tegra X1's old 20 nanometer fabrication process towards a more current manufacturing method would save a lot of money and allow Nintendo to refresh the range. Smaller chips allow for higher frequencies up to a point, plus they run on lower voltages. In short, a refresh at this point allows the switch to potentially produce more performance, less heat, and extends battery life. And the chip would be cheaper to manufacture, and there is evidence to suggest that this is indeed the case. DVSS tables for the T210B01 are available, and they can be compared to the standard X1. Operating voltages are indeed reduced, and while CPU and GPU frequencies supported by the T210 are retained, faster clocks are also available. So for example, the GPU limit of the Tegra X1 spec'd at about one gigahertz, but it maxes at 921 megahertz on the switch. And this is increased to 1.267 gigahertz on the new processor. It's worth noting that the frequency data posted for the new chip is rather old and may reference an incomplete engineering sample. And things may well be different in the final production silicon, but it shows you what the intent is with the new processor regardless. Of course, short of exploiting an older switch and using an overclocking tool like SysClock, users will never have access to the maximum Tegra X1 clocks for their consoles, though Nintendo itself, of course, is now overclocking the console in various fascinating ways, and I did a video about that recently. Now, why would Nintendo actively hold back on the full capabilities of the original Tegra X1? Well, limiting clocks improves battery life and reduces heat, putting less strain on the active cooling assembly within the hybrid console. Regardless, the option is there for Nintendo to use the presumed process advantages, not just for improved efficiency and battery life, but for higher performance too. With regards to T210B01's improvements, Higher clocks and lower voltages do suggest a drop from a 20 nanometer processor design down to 16 nanometer FinFET. Only a teardown of the new switch revisions will give us the physical dimensions that allow us to firmly identify how this new Tegra is being manufactured. But the increase in clocks seen in the DVFS tables would likely favor 16 nanometer, a mature process and a good fit for a mass produced console. And with that in mind, standard switch performance could likely be achieved with no cooling assembly required at all, meaning that a prospective switch mini wouldn't just be smaller with more battery life, it could be silent too. Meanwhile, a decent performance uplift on the GPU side could obviously improve frame rates and image quality in dynamic resolution games. Based on the clock in Nvidia's documents, though again, I should stress this might be outdated. Well, I wouldn't see a revelatory increase in system performance, nothing like a generational leap as such, but it would still be a valuable addition. While I would expect Nintendo to tie down new performance modes from a potential Switch Pro to new games or patches for existing titles, the advent of SysClock for exploited consoles has proven that just about any game can work with overclocking, even if the net improvements vary on a title by title basis. Uh, so in short, while we shouldn't get our hopes up too much, a PS4 Pro style boost mode could theoretically be incorporated with extra resources enabled for all legacy titles. While possible and with precedent on other consoles, it does seem unlikely that Nintendo would allow users to overclock their consoles. But we can live in hope, right? The stage is set then, something is happening. New Tegra X1 Silicon is almost certainly en route and we now have some idea of its capabilities. But that's all for me for now. Come on everyone, you know the score. Please like and subscribe to support our work. 
ring the bell for instant notifications and yes please consider the DF Patreon for supporting the team more directly. It really makes a difference and you get access to pristine quality video downloads. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for watching. Featuring 2.4 GHz wireless, 50mm Pro-G audio drivers, and DTS Headphone X 2.0 surround sound technology under the hood, the G935 headset delivers the ultimate wireless audio solution for gamers, whether you're playing on PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, or mobile. Order yours today from Logitech G.